Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, time for another Mr. C uh, screencast for you. Here we go. We're going to be thinking about radiation uh, today, particularly looking at fission and fusion of nuclei. Okay, so the objectives on today's lesson are all about uh, the energy stored up inside a nucleus. Pause it here if you need to check them out. Remember you're doing a flip lesson, so after watching the video, make your summary, tell me what you've learned, tell me what you think you've found out, and also ask some questions. Even if that question is something like, I don't understand about fission and fusion, please can you explain again what the difference is? Whatever it is, or you can ask something a bit more, ask about where the energy comes from. Okay, here we go. Back to my little model of the nucleus, a bit depleted. Um, this is quite a big nucleus you can see. What does it contain? It contains these little green ones. Okay, these are neutrons, they've got no charge at all. These little red ones, they're protons, they've got an awful lot of charge. Now, this is only the middle of the nucleus, remember? On this scale, of an atom rather, on this scale the electrons would be, be a mile away. Okay? This is right in the middle, but the amazing thing is this is the bit that stores up all the energy, this tiny bit in the middle. And it comes from the fact that these protons have got a really powerful force that repels them apart, because they're positive and positive. Opposites attract, but light charges repel. This whole nucleus wants to push itself apart. But to stop it from being pushed apart, there's another force there. It's called the strong nuclear force. It's really, really, really strong, hence its name, and it manages to overcome this powerful repulsion and it holds it all together. And but this, this, this fight between these two forces is the origin of all the energy inside that nucleus. So, first point for your summary. Okay, these forces uh, is, is the source of all this energy inside the nucleus. Let's have a look at it on a graph. Okay, so we're going to look at how stable a nucleus is, how tightly bound together it is, and compare that to how big the nucleus is. So we've got small nuclei and big nuclei, okay, with a high proton number. And then here, these ones are the most stable up here at the top. So we've got high stability, which means they've got the least energy. And down here, opposite way around, they've got the least stability, so they've got the most energy. That's what the axes are saying. Is what the graph looks like. Okay, so what do we learn? Down here, small nuclei, proton number one, two, three, so that's uh, hydrogen, helium, lithium, barium, small elements, okay, small nuclei actually don't have very much energy. Sorry, don't have very much stability, they've got a huge amount of energy, they're the most, the most energetic, the least stable. Up here, in the middle, we say we've got the most stable things, and then when we get big again, because okay, so atoms down here, that's like uranium and plutonium, okay, they're not as stable, so they've got less energy. What's here in the middle? Well, the winner, the most stable, okay, is iron. 26 protons plus 30 neutrons to make 56 for a mass number. Iron 56 is the most stable nucleus we know. So it's the most stable, on one level it's got the least energy, so it's the most boring nucleus. But all these nuclei want to get more stable. They don't want to be fighting all the time, so nuclei are always trying to become more stable. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, here's an example of nuclear fission. This big nucleus doesn't really get on with itself. The number of protons and neutrons is not, not good. It's not a good stable combination. What can it do? Well, it could do this and split in two. I haven't lost any protons. I haven't lost any neutrons. I've got the same numbers but it's split in two. Let's see what it looks like on the graph. Okay, so back back to the graph. Okay, here we go. <coughs> back on the graph. We've gone from a very, very big nucleus down here and it's split up into two smaller nuclei, which means that the energy, okay, is now more stable, it's got less energy. So we've got a difference in the amount of energy we had here and the amount of energy we've got here. That's the difference, and that energy then gets released. That's the energy that's released, for example, in a nuclear power station. Okay, stick that into your summary. Nuclear fission is about a big nucleus splitting up. Okay, a new thing, nuclear fusion. 
now. Don't drop them. Okay. Let's just look for nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is when two small nuclei fuse together to make one big nucleus. So let's start off with a couple of small nuclei. Okay, let's try this. Let's try that. A hydrogen with one proton and a helium with two protons. If they fuse together, they make one bigger nucleus, in this case, beryllium. Okay? Now, these protons repel each other, so it needs a lot of energy to do this, but if you can overcome that repulsion, let's see what it looks like on the graph. Here we go. Here's our graph. So we're starting down with these tiny ones down here, which have they're the least stable, they've got the most energy. Okay, we link the two together, and we go from here to somewhere up here in terms of proton number. So we've got a big difference in energy. More stable, okay, so they become more stable, so they've got less energy in the nucleus, and the energy that was in the nucleus is now going to be released. Okay, and that's the energy that gets released in a nuclear bomb or in a star like the sun. Okay, add that into your summary. Next thing, I'm going to tell you a bit more about nuclear fission. Okay, I was a little bit economical with the truth earlier on. It turns out, okay, that nucleus won't just split all of its own accord. A big nucleus, oops, needs one of these. Okay, here it comes. You've got a nucleus which is there, minding its own business. In comes this extra neutron. This extra neutron starts to agitate things. It makes the nucleus unstable. Okay, so that neutron has made that nucleus unstable. And now the combination's not right, and it's going to split up. Okay, like this. Now it's split into two smaller nuclei. So these have got less energy, and that extra energy is released. Now the split is often not perfect. For example, in this case, I've got three extra neutrons as well. Now they might whiz off somewhere else and get absorbed by another of the big nuclei and cause that to split up. And that's called induced fission. Let's have a look. Okay. <coughs> so this induced fission is caused by absorbing the extra neutron. Now this can cause a chain reaction. Let's check it out on a video. Okay. Here's our neutron. It hits into the big nucleus. The big nucleus splits up to make two small nuclei and some extra energy. Also, three neutrons get produced. These three neutrons might then go off and hit three other big nuclei. Okay, each of those big nuclei then splits up into two small nuclei and lots of energy. Lots of energy, lots of energy. Boom, boom, boom. So we've gone from uh, one bang, okay, here, then we've got three splitting, then we've got those are going to cause another nine to split, and then 27 and 81, and this thing snowballs in a chain reaction. Okay, that chain reaction takes billionths of a second, so a vast amount of energy is released. This process can be very dangerous, it can be used in a bomb, or if you control it, you can use it in a power station. If the control goes wrong, the power station goes up in smoke, Fukushima uh, or Chernobyl. Okay, let's have a think about a nuclear chain reaction again. Let's think about this time in bullet points. Okay, neutron hits the nucleus, causes the nucleus to split, makes some loose neutrons. Loose neutrons hit some more nuclei. They split up, and it's a chain reaction. Okay, bang that into your summary there. Okay, the idea about a chain reaction. That's all, folks. Okay, that's the end of today's webcast. Check out your objectives again. Make sure you know where you're going to. Finally, don't forget this is a flip lesson. Okay, so when you've finished, you've got some more work to do which is to write your own summary of what you've learned, maybe do some more research, okay, and then write me some questions to ask. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.